And like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. Check out his new movie called The Deliverance. It's got Tasha Smith in it, Omar Epps, comedian Monique in it. Let's just get straight to it. So we got this lady by the name of Ebony. She's got three kids. The oldest being Nate, the second oldest is Shantae, and the youngest one, Dre. So they all gathered at the table eating dinner, right? But then you got another lady that happens to be by the name of Bertha. Bertha is actually Ebony's mom, and clearly they don't get along. Some past beef in there, something like that. Well, I don't know the backstory yet. She complained about her food, putting too much garlic in the fish or some shit like that. We found out Ebony's got a little bit of a foul mouth. We found out she used to drink like that. We also found out she did a stint in jail at one point in time. They apparently just moved into this new house. I mean, it don't really look all that new, but bottom line is they got some place to live. Not really sure about the reason she decided to bring her mom there, even though they got beef. Next day, kids gotta go to school. We found out Shantae still talks to her dad who was living over in Iraq at this particular time. And Nate misses her dad too. Dre is indifferent to the situation. He doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter to him. I'll explain Dre later. Ebony ends up getting a call from insurance or something like that. Basically, it has something to do about her not being able to get a car because she owes money. She's got debts up the ass. He goes into one of the kids' closet and ends up finding a bottle of vodka and some money. So she goes out on the porch and she's talking to Bertha out there, but basically waiting for her kids to get back home from school. Some kid was picking on Nate when he was coming home. And Ebony seen a bruise on the back of his head where the kid threw a rock at him. Shantae snitched and said it was one of the Cordon boys down the corner. Ebony kicks the boy in the nuts and tells him, cut that shit out. And then she's like, yeah, don't bring your mom because she can get it too. I'm like, we get it. You're trying to protect your son, but the last thing we need you doing is going to jail. When you're barely living above means right now, taking care of three kids and your mother. So Bertha talks to her about all the stuff that she's been doing. And Ebony's looking at her like, really? I guess she used to do some of the same stuff to her when she was little. They don't really fully expound on that, though. So throughout all this stuff, we keep hearing flies around the house or something. Ebony has this dream. She wakes up, she keeps hearing stuff, and she keeps seeing this dude in her dreams. She thought one of the kids slammed the door, so she's thinking the kids are making noise. But they all sleep, supposedly. She goes downstairs, and she's about to check the basement, and this is where we figure out where the flies are coming from. But we're like, what the heck is in this basement? But she never, but the, ah, she never decides to check it. Now, I'm thinking to myself, you bought this house, but you never decide to go into the basement? Did you ever check that shit? What the heck is down there that's attracting flies? Now we got another scene where they're all chilling downstairs. Now, Shanti's supposed to be getting ready for a birthday party or whatever. And they're all basically just sitting in the room watching TV while Ebony is braiding Shanti's hair. Now, Ebony was trying to explain, so she's trying to make it a laid back birthday because basically she ain't got no money like that. Shanti was feeling some type of way because she really wanted a new phone. Bertha's basically trying to preach to Ebony again. Ebony is like, Oh, you trying to act like you're all holier than thou? Because she goes to this particular church, she's trying to heal herself. And by the way, Tasha Smith is actually the preacher at this church. Yeah. She's basically like a cameo in this movie, but think about it. <laughs> You've seen her in Tyler Perry movies, usually connected with Michael Jai White. <laughs> Going all out and crazy on people all the time. Now picture her as a fucking preacher. Thinking about that is hilarious. Anyway. So the thing is, Ebony kind of does drink, but she's trying to keep herself together. At one point in time, she smacked Dre in the mouth because he was talking reckless or whatever like that. To the point where his lip got busted open, she apologized or whatever like that. So maybe she's not mother of the year, but this might help. So we see Bertha getting all dolled up one day, right? But she's going away to the clinic. Turns out she's been getting chemo for some type of cancer. Now, the the, host, the the male nurse that actually works with her is being played by Omar Epps, going by the dude, going, he's going by the name Melvin. She really want to see what's up with him. You already know what it is. He was kind of feeling her too. Then you got these other girls on the side just hating and shit. Right before she's about to leave the clinic, she talks to the receptionist and finds out she owes like two months of back pay, which is basically like $30,000. She thought it was getting paid through Medicare the whole time. It turns out Medicare, they've been stopping using the app for like a couple years. So she's thinking to herself, who's been paying for my treatments? Turns out it was actually Ebony paying for her treatments. So Ebony's been doing that. Meanwhile, she's had to forego a car. Uh, she's been putting other stuff on hold. Like a lot, she's been in a lot of debt. She's still been paying for chemo to keep her mom alive. So Ebony's not terrible, but hold that thought. Let's talk about Dre for a minute. Now, Dre will wake out from his sleep. At first, I thought he was sleepwalking. He got in the kitchen and drank this whole thing of milk. But the thing they told us before is he's lactose intolerant. Why would he drink a whole gallon of milk? At the same time, a bird hit the windshield, just killed itself. He would go out and check on the bird, and then he went back in the house. Then there was one time where Ebony was outside in the back porch with Dre. He was just sitting there chilling on a um, swing. She was just chilling out there, had the cush rolled up. You already know what time it was. But while she's out there, she's noticing Tr uh, Dre is talking to himself. We're like, what the heck is he talking to? He says he was talking to somebody named Trey. Now you're thinking like, okay, he's just got an imaginary friend, but keep that name Trey in the back of your head too. So we get to the situation where Ebony woke up out of her sleep again or whatever like that. She goes down into the kitchen. I don't know what she was looking for at that point, but then Nate uh, comes downstairs and scares her. And he's asking her, like, where's his money? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, it totally clicked back into her mind. We were like, oh, yeah, she did find vodka and a thing of money in the kid's um, room or whatever. So she's like, yeah, by the way, what were you doing with the vodka? He says he was trying to keep it away from her. He honestly was like, he was trying to consider whether he was going to flush it or not. 
But the thing is, he's worried about the money because he's been saving the money to get away from her. So she's not giving it to him. They get into an argument. He ends up pushing her against the dad going uh uh floor. They get into a scuffle. Dre comes down the steps trying to stop it, right? But he ends up tripping on the bat that she had in her hand earlier. He fell into some type of train and fucks himself up. So Ebony's basically trying to take care of Trey and then Dre and then Nate goes back up in his room. She pleads for him not to leave, so he stays. And he pretty much doesn't have a choice because he's looking for the money to get extra money so he can get about the house because he misses his dad. Yeah. So then there was another night where Ebony was walking out of her sleep or whatever like that. She starts looking around the house. She looks outside and then she sees Dre outside. So she's trying to figure out what the heck is Trey doing outside? He says he sometimes talks to Trey, whether he's in the basement, a hole in the basement downstairs or in his closet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is going to lead to something. He gets him back to bed and then tomorrow's supposed to be Shantae's party. A couple people come by the house. They celebrating. Elvis chilling with Bertha trying to get a swerve on. One of her lady friends is chilling with the kids, rolling dice. <laughs> After a while, she gets the kids to bed. But before that, she did give Ashanti a new phone as a present. And when he gets two drunk stars dancing on people, they like, all right. So everybody's looking at her like clearly she's had drinking problems in the past. That's to the point where everybody else ends up dipping out. They're like, all right. <laughs> Bertha ends up falling asleep on the couch. Ebony's about to fall asleep somewhere else, and all of a sudden she sees Dre back downstairs. He was just staring at the wall, and all of a sudden he snapped out of it. And we're just like, is he under a trance or something? Like I said, she gets him back upstairs again, and all of a sudden you keep hearing this thumping or whatever like that. And all this thumping, you, it, the sounds you think are coming from the closet. Because the kids are supposed to be asleep, but they're not necessarily asleep, but they're just laying there. Ebony thinks they're causing ruckus, so she goes up into the room. All of a sudden, you hear all this screaming and hollering over like that. Bertha wakes up. She goes in the room. Next thing we see, the kids on one side of the wall, and then we see Ebony on the floor. So Dre ends up telling Bertha they got thrown against the wall. So obviously, she assumes Ebony did it, but Ebony can't even speak. So Bertha's probably thinking to herself, Ebony's drunk. She was wilding. But when she really hurt her kids like that, it's crazy. Then we hear Fly start buzzing again, and we know it's something in that damn basement. Turns out... Everybody next day chilling in the backyard. They got an uh, uh, inspector down there, whatever like that. It was a dead cat in the uh, basement. I'm like, really? So you've been living there most of this time, and you were too scared to go in your own basement to try to figure out what the heck of the smell is, and there's a fucking dead cat in there the whole time? How long has that cat been in there? As long as they had the house? Didn't she inspect the house before this shit? Anyway. The guy needs $60 to get the cat out. She ain't got no money to pay him, and then Nate digs into his stash and gives him 60 while that's going on, we get Cynthia, played by Monique, come into the house. She comes around the back to meet up with Ebony, so they go to talk in the house. Everybody goes in the house, and we find out Cynthia is actually a DCS officer. Basically, Child Protective Services. Now, apparently, they've moved locations a couple of times. And the reason she just happened to pop up right now is because she just came from a case having to deal with her baby father. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, isn't he in Iraq? Where they're living at right now currently is in somewhere in Pittsburgh. How the fuck did they do this case with the baby father? Did they do it on a Zoom call or something? So anyway, the kids make up excuses for the bruises on them. But Cynthia not buying this shit. But another reason she came is because she actually went to the school. Apparently, the kids are not doing good in school. So she's basically on Ebony ass to get herself together. Now, Cynthia is leaving. There's this other lady looking from across the street. At one point in time, this lady takes pictures of the house. So you're thinking at this one point in time, you're like, okay, is this lady working with Cynthia or whatever like that? But they don't really talk to each other. So I'm like, okay, she's not a next door neighbor. So I'm like, what's the deal with this chick? We'll find out in a minute. So we got this one scene where Ebony's trying to get Dre a bath or whatever, right? She goes downstairs to get something and she ends up talking to Bertha. They get into their little arguments or whatever like that, telling her she needs to be sanctified through the saint of God. And she's like, yeah, you just started finding God all of a sudden, right? I mean, never really get to the backstories of what Bertha did to Ebony when she was little. While that's going on, we hear Dre screaming for help. Next thing we know, Nate was choking out Dre in the bathtub trying to drown him. We're like, what the heck is going on with Nate? She ends up pulling off Nate and it turns out Nate was in some type of trance, too. So we're like, okay, there's something must be going on in this house. Yeah, Ebony and Bertha went up there at the same time to save Dre from Nate. But they're still not convinced something is going on. It's just been crazy. Then all the kids go to school. Now, while they're in school, Nate starts just laughing out of nowhere. As the teacher's giving an editorial about AIDS, and we're like, what the heck is he laughing at? He starts laughing and stops, and we're like, what's going on with Nate, yo? Then Ashanti goes to her band teacher or whatever like that. Turns out she's on a period... And then when we get to Dre, Dre all of a sudden just goes to the back of the room, drops his pants, and then takes a shit in the middle of the classroom. Turns out he was actually eating his own shit and was throwing it at the, the teachers or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So all the kids get taken to the hospital or whatever like that. But here's the thing. The doctor is saying the tests are normal, everything's just fine or whatever like that. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, why does she keep saying everything's fine but keep looking back at Bertha like Ebony's a problem? And everybody's like, everything's fine. My son was eating shit in the classroom. The crazy thing is Bertha's trying to be on the doctor's side and her side. And she's like, did you ever stop to think that everybody might not be wrong? I'm like, fam. 
But then Bertha kind of does believe there's something evil floating around in the house. And I'm like, how did she come to that conclusion? Maybe she just thought the devil was there and she needs to be sanctified. I don't know. To confirm this, Bertha ends up going to talk to the preacher, Tasha. Which when she starts explaining to her, even she turns her away and tells her, maybe you need to go to another church. I'm like, wow. Ebony gets back to the house. She's stressed and Cynthia comes over again. Cynthia's doing a checkup. She sees Ebony looking bad right now. They get to the heartfelt conversation about her having kids and whatnot. It turns out Cynthia did have a son. So she tells a story about how she was taking her son somewhere, but he ended up dying. We're like, how did he die? She apparently turned her head for two seconds, and then when she turned around, all of a sudden her son got hit by a freaking car. I'm like, what? How did your son get hit by a car when you were with him? And what span of two seconds did you ignore him to turn around and figure this? Like, what? I know Ebony's thinking to herself, that's messed up, but the thing is, I'm trying to do this thing with three kids and my mom here. Cynthia ends up leaving the house, but then that lady's staring over there again. At the Bertha chases him out with a bat, and then she hits the bat against the lady's car. She ends up dipping out. Yeah, Bertha looks at Ebony like, yeah, you be on your bullshit, but I damn, I am, the damn, they don't let them take your kids away from you. Ebony's struggling with all types of shit. She ends up going to the bar, getting drunk, talking to people. When she comes out the bar, we find out that lady that's been spooking out of the house or whatever like that, she was following her. So apparently this lady's been seeing some things out of that house lately to finally end up talking to Ebony. So apparently she heard about the reports of things that's going on with the children. They end up going to this diner, right? And we find out this lady's name is Bernice. She, she's actually an apostle. And she said she wanted to be sure before she talked to her. About what exactly? So Bernice thinks the devil lives in this house that she's in. So we get a clip of these evaluations that Dre was going through after he ate some shit. <laughs> and this lady was showing him pictures. Showed him a picture of an apple. Showed him a picture of like a car. And he's supposed to respond to what he sees. Then she shows him a picture of a bird. So this bird happened to be a crow. The crow looked like a same crow that uh, Dre had saw that ran into the window when he was drinking milk that one time when he was woke up and he was sleepwalking. Dre sees the crow and says, that's Dre. We're like... What? <laughs> Why does he think this crow is Trey, his imaginary friend that he's been talking to? So Bernice tells Ebony, like, look, there was a family that was living here before y'all got there. It was a wife and a husband, two kids, one boy, one girl. The reason she knows this family because they used to go to Bernice's church. One day, the son was running around committing all these other things that were happening to him. He was sleepwalking in trances and stuff just like Dre. Then there was a situation where the wife was possessed. She ends up taking the axe and chopping off her husband's head, done deal, dead as shit. And then when the daughter walked in there, she ends up chopping up the daughter too. I was like, what the fuck? Apparently the son was manipulating all the people in the house. The son's name was Trey. After she killed her own daughter, she ended up hanging herself. Whatever happened to Trey? Nobody knows. They said he died, but they never found his body. Bernice believes that the devil actually lives in that house and is now controlling her son, Dre. Now, Ebony's not trying to hear this, even though she has been trying to explain this exact type of thing to other people. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why she want to hear it from somebody that she actually feels like will relate to her? But whatever. She takes information, though, and leaves. And then we next thing we see her is going to work. I guess she works at a barbershop, a beauty salon or something. Now, while this is all going down, Bertha's in the house and she keeps hearing some ominous stuff or whatever like that. She goes downstairs and she ends up getting her Bible. Next thing we know, she gets attacked while she's in the house. It's like a shadowy figure in her attach attacking her, but we could pretty much figure out it's Dre. Next thing you know, Ebony gets a call from somebody. We don't know who specifically. I think it was from Nate. She comes back to the house and finds Bertha dead as shit. Next thing we know, the police come take her away or Bertha away or the ambulance or whatever. Ebony, all the kids are still in the house, just shocked, just sitting on the couch. And I'm thinking to myself, were all of them in the house when Bertha died? Why was Dre the only one that confronted Bertha at the time when she was, when she was getting killed? What were Nate and Shantae doing? After everything goes down, Ebony gets all the kids in the car and they end up just driving. They ain't even packed shit. They were just driving. It was just like, okay, where is she going to go? I guess she's thinking to herself, we just got to get out of this house. All of a sudden, Dre out of nowhere starts speaking. His tongues get demonic and his eyes just turn black. She ends up running out the car in front of this bar, right? She goes to this bar and she's asking for help. And she's like, somebody's killing my kids. So these people come out, right? They check out the car. Everybody's asleep. The kids wake up out of the trance again. So now we're thinking, they're probably thinking to themselves, something's wrong with Ebony. The next thing we see is Ebony in the hospital talking to this lady, giving a psychic evaluation. So they found out she was drinking like a couple weeks ago. They found out she smoked weed. They found a couple of bruises on the kids' arms and stuff. Basically, they're looking at her like she ain't fit to have her kids. The next thing we see Ebony in this room. Cynthia comes over to try to console or whatever. And we find out, yeah, they took her kids from her. They're going into foster care. Ebony, with nowhere else to turn, goes to Benice's church. Now, I'm not sure if Ebony really believed in God because of things that she went through in her past. She basically will go to Bernice and ask for her guidance and everything like that. So she's going along with it. Now, Cynthia is talking to one of the doctors and we find out that Dre is in this one padded room or whatever. He's been spazzing, spitting up vomit like the goddamn exorcist. After they calm him down, Cynthia goes in the room. Now, he's supposed to be, you know, medicated or whatever like that, but he's not. He starts talking in tongues again to Cynthia. 
The thing is, he wants Cynthia to entire, and Cynthia's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. But the thing is, he uh, gets the latches done himself, jumps on the ground, and starts climbing up the wall backwards. We're like, what the fuck? Now, my question is, how the heck does Cynthia get out that room without Dre getting out of there and keeping him locked up in there? And more so, they show that Dre's in a whole nother, other hospital room, just a regular hospital room, strapped to a gurney, and heavily medicated. How did they get him medicated? So we found out from Bernice that when it comes to Dre, he's been the one advocating to make sure the uh, his other siblings are being controlled by him. So that's why they're not doing as much crazy shit as Dre is doing. So Dre's supposed to be Lucifer in this situation. So the plan is Ebony's going to sneak in the hospital to get Dre out. He's gonna be, she's going to be dressed up like a nurse. She's saying hi to the other nurses walking by, thinking to myself, like, they don't know her. What's... Just sneak the fuck by. <laughs> she goes in the room, gets Dre out the hospital in a, on a wheelchair. Bernice is already waiting outside to pick him up in the car to dip off. I'm like, okay. I guess Dre was still heavily sedated because by the time they got back to the house, they had them all chained up and shit. Bernice is going to perform the exorcist ritual while Ebony is standing back. Now, Bernice was troubled before because she couldn't save the family from the past. Will she be able to save Dre? So while she's doing the exorcism, Dre starts turning into people or whatever like that. Next thing you know, Dre starts looking like an evil version of Bertha. As she's doing incantations or whatever like that, Dre ends up breaking out the chains. Lucifer starts fighting back with his powers. And then Bernice tells Ebony to get upstairs. While that's going on, Nate is in some room in foster care. He is like tearing apart his blood or whatever, like eating at his own flesh and shit. Shantae is floating up out of her bed or whatever like that. You see blood coming off her arms. We're like, what the fuck is going on? Dre ends up becoming too strong for Bernice and ends up done dealing her daddy's shit. I'm like, what? Ebony came back down, seen the destruction. Bernice gives her a thing of holy water. And now to end all this shit, Ebony's got to go in the basement. Confront her fears and all that. She goes in the basement, finds Dre. Then Dre's got to contort her own body and whatnot. Then Dre ends up turning into an evil version of Ebony or a version of Ebony, what she used to look like before now or something like that. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Ebony taps into her subconscious. And she accepts Jesus as her savior or whatever like that. Then she starts speaking in tongues. Lucifer gets burnt up and is sent back to hell. The plague is over. Dre's all right. Ebony's all right. Uh... Nate's all right. Shantae's all right. Bernie's still dead as shit. Next day, Cynthia comes over to her house, and we find out that her kids are still going to be in foster care for the time being. Ebony says she's going to get herself together. She's moving back in Philly with her uh, aunt or something like that. And Cynthia says she's going to do everything that she can so she can help her get her kids back. About six months goes by after this, and she was finally able to come back to Pittsburgh to get her kids. And she's going to try to reconcile with the dad, who apparently is still, or maybe just came back from Iraq, who knows. Now apparently this was supposed to be a true story cause she apparently reconciled with the baby dad. They all lived together in Philly and the house was pretty much vacant until 2016 when they finally demolished it. They say people still don't go near the area because strange occurrences still happen to this day. All right, I got a question. If Dre was talking to Trey, who was supposed to be his imaginary friend, but we find out it was actually the devil or a spirit or whatever like that. If Trey that was living there for years and the whole family got killed or whatever like that, who the heck possessed Trey? It was an ongoing cycle within families. The thing is, it all happened within that house. So what else happened there before the other family got there? Now, Bernice at one point in the movie said it was like a centuries ongoing curse within this particular house. But I guess she did some other research. So how does she know that based off the only information she had with the other family that was living there before Ebony and her family got there? I got a whole lot of other questions, but bottom line is, you should check this movie out. The Deliverance on Netflix. Check it out.